down, up, down, up, down, up. Let's look at the Node MCU board. So the Node MCU board has an LED over here, and this LED is connected to D0, and um, the other end is connected to 3.3 uh, volt. So that means that every time you want to uh, turn on the LED, just pull the spin to low, uh, and the LED will turn on because this will be ground in the 3.3 volt and uh, uh, the current should pass through it and uh, it should light up. And every time this is high, there's no potential difference between this end, the other end being 3.3 volt, so this will turn off. So you can turn on and off the LED by changing the state of this particular pin. So once you have that uh, coded in, you just, uh, the next thing you want to do is then use the REST API. So in REST API, as long as you access this on or off, it uh, goes and turns the spin on and off. So this is very simple. So once you code that in, um, that's all on the software side that you have to do on the ESP8266. So the next question is why use microcontroller CPU in order to analyze the wise data. Instead, let's use this phone or a computer CPU and GPU via the web browser. So basically, you can either use Chrome or Firefox, where they both support the web audio API and the web GL C GPU acceleration in order to access your microphone. But the thing with Chrome is Chrome has halted all HTTP requests to a microphone. So as of now, that is as of recording this video, you can use Firefox to do this particular project that is access your microphone through your browser and then use these APIs to actually uh, do something useful. So in our case, we're going to use a Firefox browser to access the microphone phone, do a Fourier transformation on the browser using the phone or the computer's uh, GPU, CPU in order to get something called a spectrogram. So spectrogram, so in, uh, if you remember from a previous video, I'm going to leave links here, is that every time you record something, you can do Fourier transformation and FFT stands for fast Fourier transformation. So basically uh, what this does is it converts your time into frequency domain. So that is what we plot here. We plot the frequency as a function of time. And this is just an occurrence of a word. And in the spectrogram, you can actually then use machine learning to figure out what keyword has been uttered by a person. So what we're going to put it into is something called as a black box, which is what I call it. Um, so in this case, this black box is a TensorFlow JS black box that actually does keyword detection. And this can detect four words as of now that it is trained upon. So it recognizes up, down, right, and left. So basically you can control some kind of a controller on the screen or something like that. Uh, but uh, if you look into this box, you can actually then retrain this uh, using something called transfer learning. That is, it is trained upon huge number of words. What you do is remove the output layer and then input uh, what you want to train it on, like let's say on and off. And then you can then get the correct kind of inputs based on what our networks you already had built this particular uh, black box into. So as of now, because I'm not a data scientist, I'm not going to create a huge data set to train it on on and off. I'm just going to use what it already comes with. So basically, I'm going to use up, down to turn on and off, uh, on and off uh, uh, LED. So basically, what this black box does is it takes this as an input and then executes different codes. If it recognizes up, it can execute a code uh, somewhere called code one, if it recognizes down code two, or, and so on and so forth. And basically, this is a JavaScript code. So basically, you can access the REST API of your ESP266 at different portions of the code. So in this case, we're going to access the on, and in this case, we're going to access the off. And we're not going to do anything for these two portions. So the HTML part is very simple. All you have to load are the TensorFlow uh, JavaScript uh, script, as well as the speech command. So this speech command is what 
does up, down, right, and left. And basically, you can either load it through the spiffs or you can uncomment these two lines and comment these two lines to load it directly from the web. And basically, the other thing over here is just a style sheet and on and off buttons that just do a REST API if you want to do it that way. Or you can use the script, which I'm going to go into the details of. So this script is just a simple recognizer. So it uses the browser's foot transformation and it loads in the four directions that's up, down, right, and left, and it loads this model, and then it does the prediction. So the prediction is actually then it listens to these keywords and puts a score on each one of these prediction, takes the best prediction, and sends it into a function. So what this function is, is all it recognizes is if it's an up, it gives an output as on, if it's down, it gives off, and I'm not doing anything if it if any other input comes in. So once this is either on or off, so that is what it does here, then it calls this REST API um, to actually turn on and off that LED. So this is actually very simple. The only thing that uh, a person can change on this that is kind of very simple is this probability threshold. That is, any keyword that is detected beyond 75% is recognized and acted upon based on this probability. So if you want your detection to be more accurate, you can increase this number. You, If you want it to be less accurate, you can decrease this number. So there you go. So that is all that is in the terms of code. So you just load the script in your HTML and you should be able to do um, the voice recognition, that is uh, uh, speech recognition for certain words on the browser directly and then access the REST API of ESP8266. And uh, again, this is written for an ESP8266, but you can easily transfer it to any microcontroller that has a REST API built into it. So go ahead and try it out. Bye. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down.